From time to time, your sanitary pump requires routine maintenance to ensure peak operating efficiency. This video will teach you the standard service procedures of the Waukesha Cherry Burrell Universal 3 pump with double mechanical seals. It is important to note the use of a food-grade lubricant in the maintenance procedure to ensure proper operation of the pump and its internal components. Use of other types of lubricant may cause damage to internal components, resulting in a malfunctioning pump. Please refer to the operation manual for additional details on where and how to apply lubricant throughout the maintenance process. Remove the cover nuts from the cover. Using a soft hammer, tap the cover off the body studs and dowel pins. To lift the cover on a 210 or 320 size U3 pump, attach an eye bolt to the threaded hole in the cover and attach lifting straps or chains to the eye bolt. Next, remove and inspect the cover gasket. Place the cover on a protected surface with the finished surfaces facing up. Use the rotor blocking tool to keep the rotors from turning when removing the rotor nuts. SPX Flow recommends using a non-marring socket tool for removing and installing the rotor nuts. When working on a rotor, always block the rotor against the body and not against the other rotors as damage may occur. Remove and discard the rotor nut o-rings from each rotor nut. Remove the rotors by hand and place them on a protected surface to prevent damage to these close tolerance parts. Remove the rotary seals and rotary seal o-rings from the rotors. Next, remove the stationary seals from the pump body and then remove the stationary o-rings from the seals. Remove the two body retaining screws. With a soft hammer, Tap the body off the gear case, dowel pins, and body studs. Slide the body straight off the body studs to prevent damaging the mechanical seal parts. For models 130 and higher, use a lifting strap threaded through the ports to remove the body. Place the body on a protected surface with the seals facing up. Once the pump body has been removed, Remove the flush side rotary seal, O-ring, and adjusting ring from each shaft. Use caution not to damage the seals during removal. Next, remove the adjusting ring O-rings from the shaft groove on each shaft. Loosen the three stationary seal retaining bolts and remove one from each seal housing. Remove the flush side stationary seal. Next, remove the wave spring and stationary seal o-ring. Inspect the seal housing pins for damage and repair or replace them as necessary. If the pins are loose, replace them with new ones. Repeat the process for the other side. Remove the four seal housing bolts and remove the seal housing. Next, remove the drive ring, the shaft ring found on 130 size pumps and smaller, and the seal housing O-ring. Note that on 180 size pumps and larger, the seal housing O-ring is installed on the seal housing. For 130 size pumps and smaller, install the shaft ring with the notch openings facing toward you and perpendicular with the ports. Next, install the drive ring with the tab protrusions facing the pump body. Next, apply lubricant to the seal housing o-ring and install. 
Install the seal housing and secure with four bolts, which have anti-seize compound applied to the threads. Torque the bolts down to the specified value as referenced in the manual. Install the lubricated stationary seal o-ring as shown on both sides. The stationary seal o-ring is located between the seal housing and the drive ring. Next, install the wave spring. Apply anti-seize compound to the three seal retaining bolts. Next, install the flush side of the stationary seal, making sure to line up the notches on the seal to the seal housing pens. Install and tighten the seal retaining bolts. Repeat the process for the other seal. Confirm that each seal moves easily in and out by applying finger pressure to the seal. If the seal does not move, reassemble the seal and reconfirm. For 180 size pumps and larger, install the drive ring with the tab protrusions facing the pump body. Note that the size of the drive ring tab that protrudes faces the body. The flat side of the tab faces up. For 180 size pumps and larger, the drive ring may contain either two or four tabs. For rings with two tabs, make sure they are positioned parallel to the side ports of the body as shown. Install the seal housing o-ring in the seal housing. Install the seal housing, noting that the flat of the housing is facing the center of the pump body. Lubricate and install the adjusting ring O-rings onto the shaft grooves. Install the adjusting ring onto each pump shaft. Make sure to align the flats on the adjusting ring to the flats on the drive shafts. Next, lubricate and install the rotary seal O-ring onto the adjusting ring. Next, install the flush side rotary seal onto the shaft aligning the tab with the notch on the seal. Repeat these procedures on the other shaft. Install the pump body into the gear case. Confirm that the pump body dowel pins align with the correct size bushings in the gear case. Apply a food grade anti-seize compound to the body retaining screws and hand tighten so the pump body is securely seated against the gear case. Lubricate and install the stationary seal o-ring onto the stationary seal. Install the seal into the pump body. Align the notches in the seal with the tabs on the drive ring. Push the seal into the pump so that the o-ring can seat in the bore and hold the seal in place. After installing the stationary seal, gently push on it. The seal should spring back freely. If it does not spring back, check the seal installation. Repeat the process for the other shaft. Next, lubricate and install the rotary seal o-ring into the rotor. Next, install the rotary seal by aligning the notches in the seal with the drive pins on the rotor. After installing the rotary seal, it should fit solidly in the rotor. Make sure the o-ring is not pinched. Repeat the process for the second rotor. Align the timing spline of the rotor and the pump shaft and push the rotor onto the shaft. Repeat the process for the second rotor. Lubricate and install the rotor nut o-rings onto the rotor nuts. Apply a small amount of food grade anti-seize compound to the shaft threads and install the rotor nuts.
Use a non-marring socket with a torque wrench set to the torque value indicated in the manual. Insert the rotor blocking tool to prevent the rotors from turning and tighten each rotor nut. Remove the rotor blocking tool after torquing. Next, lubricate and install the cover gasket into the groove on the pump body. Align the cover holes with the studs on the pump body and install the cover. Apply anti-seize compound to the threads and install the cover nuts by hand. With a torque wrench set to the proper value as found in the manual, tighten the cover nuts in a cross pattern. Following these procedures will help you properly maintain your SPX Flow Waukesha Cherry Burrell Universal 3 pump to maximize operating life and maintain process integrity. To order genuine OEM replacement parts or special tools, contact your authorized Waukesha Cherry Burrell sales representative or visit www.spxflow.com/wcb for more information.